Alrighty, so you, we are here today with Ulf Lehmann, who is, as you may have known, from Germany. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're working on at the moment. We'll get into other works later. Okay, um, about me. I'm a storyteller. I didn't realize it, though, for the longest of times. I was unhappy pretty much in everything I did with my life. Tried. I, I'm a banker. I'm a learned banker. Imagine that. So. Hi. Yeah, I quit that after I finished my apprenticeship, though, so I decided the only time I'd ever go back into, um, okay, this is a word play, and that only works in German. The economy in German means Wirtschaft. Yeah, Wirtschaft. The pub also means Wirtschaft, and I said the only time I'd ever go back into economy is if I have to pay for my drinks, so. Um. <laughs> Do you know what? Good plan. <laughs> Yeah, and well, then I studied, I tried to study movie and TV sciences, which is uh -huh. basically just an, uh, analyzing um, why uh, f film theories and shit. I mean, it's like, um, yeah, that's like analyzing why Hamlet talks to the skull basically just for movies <laughs> which is really silly we had we had introduction to feminist film theory and <laughs> believe it or not they actually argued that the lamps on the top of the helmets of the astronauts in alien were actually representatives of well it was feminist guess what it was a penis symbol of course so yeah, that, that's that's when <laughs> that's that's when they lost us. We, we were sitting I'm there sorry. howling with laughter. It's like, I, this I don't is so think, stupid. Yeah, I don't think the uh, director of that film was really going that in depth. No, Just no, saying. not really. And I mean, you got you got uh, divers and people having the lamps on their helmets. It's like uh -huh. what? You you need to see things. I, I think that's more of see, you know illuminating yeah. the dark stuff. And 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 okay, it, it went so far that afterwards we analyzed, or we were supposed to analyze um, commercials. Oh no! <laughs> and there was this CNA Young Collection commercial where they all jump onto this train, and the train goes through the tunnel and breaks through the wall in the tunnel, and we were like. Deflowering the mainland! <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we got kicked out of that class real fast. <laughs> well done, I'd say that's quite the accomplishment. Yeah. Um, wow. Um, okay, I didn't finish that either. Turns out, well, um, I got, got bored e easily with stuff. Um, oh, yeah, I know that one. And I got more miserable and more miserable over the time. And in the end, I was like, okay, yeah. Second nervous breakdown. And my best friend said, you will go to therapy now. You will get your head straight. And I went to behavioral therapy. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, my therapist, well, we worked. It. She, she had like three months or so before she actually cracked me and got, it got to me. And then, yeah, five months later, the first novel was finished. <laughs> wow. Cool. <laughs> yeah. So that's pretty much the Reader's Digest version of um, <laughs> the life of Ulf Lehmann. Um, what I'm working on right now is my fourth novel. Uh-huh. And, well, the first one, Shattered Dreams, Shattered Hopes, Shattered Fears. Yeah. Now it's Shattered Walls. There's a theme there. I, <laughs> huh. Weird, isn't it? Um, well, okay, the, the titles, initially it was a trilogy. Sure. It was supposed to be a trilogy. Shattered Dreams, Shattered Hopes, Shattered Bonds. Basically uh -huh. signifying uh, the stages the character went through to obtain, in the end, like, yay! Every... <laughs> Constraint is gone. I'm free. And anyway, um, when I signed up with uh, Crossroad Press, they had mm -hmm. only read my first book and were happy to publish that. And I said, they said like, okay, yeah, that's like 
158,000 words. Mm -hmm. I said, you ain't seen nothing yet. So I sent him over the manuscript for Shattered Hopes, which was 300,000 words, completely fully edited. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they were like, uh, no. <laughs> oh. Oh. That's too much. <laughs> Silly people. Yeah, I mean, uh, I can understand it from a business standpoint because, well, you have to, if you may, need to make a profit via Amazon, you have to price it somewhere along, along the lines of $24 for something that you would make, make a minimal profit and they want to make some mo more money out of it. So when they have to think, okay, it's 30 bucks and then they can also cut it in two and so, yeah. Yeah, well, that's what happens when Amazon and their system gets involved. Uh, I mean, I love the print-on-demand system. Oh, yeah. On one hand, you have you, you get the chance as a writer to tell your stories. Mm -hmm. I mean, on the other hand, some people think they're writers and they get to th they think they can get, they can tell their stories, which is really disturbing. I've read uh, a few of those. <laughs> <laughs> it's never good. Yeah, I have a straight razor somewhere well hidden. <laughs> yep. Yep. Ah, uh, well. Well, I mean, that's part of the problem with the uh, world of publishing these days. Is anyone can publish anything, and there's no real criteria to stop you. Even though, really, people, you should maybe um, spell check. Spell check yes. is useful. Um. Not only that, but in my opinion, it's it's it boils down to what do we what do we know? What do we the writers know? And uh, for me, the 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 saying "write what you know" is mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, you need to know it emotionally. You need to yeah. know the emotions people talk about, and then you need to know about certain S and M practices to actually write a compelling. Twilight fan fiction, to put it nicely, <laughs> and um, yep. <laughs> but 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 I mean, if you if you look at the uh, some some other stuff that has been published years ago, and I'm thinking of a certain dark elf swinging scimitars here, mm -hmm. and going against any kind of armor. Which is like, right, we're talking a cavalry weapon against armor, slashing weapon against chainmail. Guess what doesn't work? <laughs> I, I, I have to think about that one. <laughs> yeah. So, but, but, so it's not only what's her face, E.L. James or whatever, who's guilty know. of uh, not re uh, researching stuff. And nothing against Bob Salvatore. Bob, I love you in case you watch this, but... Uh, so this is a D and D problem. That's not a Bob Salvatore problem in mm -hmm. and of itself. I mean, it's it's everywhere, all over the place, and I think that's one of the biggest gripes I have with fantasy in general. It's like, oh yeah, let's fight with our swords and hack shit. No, you won't, because the bastard is wearing armor. You won't hack nothing. Well, I mean, you might get that slight sliver, you know, between one piece and the next, and then it. But the sword has to be properly sharp, and it's got to be at the right angle, and the velocity, and I mean, you know, there's math involved. Yeah, and even if if you don't do the math, it's like, do you know how the people died at Ajinkur? <laughs> <laughs> huh. Most of them were killed with axes. Screw the bows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so you're a fairly serious researcher type then? Well, I'm obsessive compulsive about realism, let's put it this way. I think that'll work. Works well. I mean, if you can get those little details correct, then the larger story tends to make a little bit more sense. Precisely. And and I, I wrote this in my blog somewhere on on, on, on um blah, 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 Goodreads. Mm. Um, if you know your shit quite literally, you you get ideas from that. For instance, if you know how communal ba uh, toilets worked in ancient Rome, you can, yeah, 
you can pick shit up from there. Mm -hmm. And even if it's just like, oh, I lost my purse, let's go to the uh, sewers and find it. And you hear, overhear something that happens while they're talking business up there. Mm -hmm. Know your shit, quite literally. Yep. Yep. Okay, so has that actually made it into your stories yet? Uh, no, that doesn't. <laughs> that hasn't. But, 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 but this, ki this kind of knowledge still, it has its uses. Mm -hmm. So, I mean... I live in a city that has, uh, our church is 600 years old, so the part of the building I'm sitting in now is 300 years old, so... A bit modern. Um, I'm say again? It's a bit modern, comparatively. <laughs> yes, it is, but still, I mean, um, I'm still surrounded by medieval history, so... You know, True. We've got True. Three, four, three castles, one ruined of those three in three, four kilometers distance, so... <laughs> yeah, it's there. Yes, see here. My town was built uh, 60 years ago. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> uh, it's a little bit different over here. We're not quite so um, yeah. up on the history. <laughs> well, and, and, and I've always been a buff for history. I mean, I fell in love with the Tutankhamun mask. I saw it when I was nine, and that, that was like the most amazing thing I had ever seen. Then I was like, "Whoa!" Very cool. Yeah. Okay, so your trilogy is no longer a trilogy. Yeah, it's a pentalogy, I think. Or oh, what is it? Pen, pen, yeah. <laughs> so what's next for it? Well, I need to finish Shattered uh, Walls, and then it's Shattered Bonds. Finally, I get to write Shattered Bonds. I mean, it, I had some trouble there. Mostly, I... Okay. Uh, okay, can I... Uh, I had surgery done, and after surgery, I felt completely exhausted all the time. Turns out I had sleep apnea because I'm ah. too fat, so um, I needed to fix that first. And then I needed to research more to get the book right, because... Well, um, my uh, back when I started the uh, the story, I mm -hmm. said like, okay, my elves are like the Romans; they're like a faded empire, and well, not really faded, but stuff. And then I was like, hey, wouldn't it be nice if the elves came back now? And then my shorthand ended pretty much because all of a sudden I was like, okay, how does the Roman legion fun function, and how do I translate that into fantasy? Very carefully? Yeah, but it works out so nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, I'm, this is not really spoilery because I'm not telling anything. No, but if you read my books, you can figure this stuff out. Um, mm -hmm. My magic works on potential. Either mm -hmm. um, what an item can be in the future or uh -huh. what it was. So basically what they did, the elves, is... They took, um, well, pieces of wood this long mm -hmm. out of a tree. Mm -hmm. And then basically what they do is they have their mage for that particular centuria mm -hmm. remind the little spear that it was part of a long tree. Oh. <laughs> Interesting. For a moment, same thing with the shields. They're slices. Uh-huh. So it's it's like time travel applied to war. Exactly. <laughs> kind of, sort of. I mean, it's also the same with, hey, we got a pebble here. That pebble used to be a boulder that ran through the mountain. Let's throw the pebble. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. Oh, I can imagine the injuries from that would be bad. Yeah, but it... If, if, for me, it's, it's uh, the beauty of it it makes sense internally. It, oh, it, yeah. Everything, this way, every you don't have like, ooh, fireball and shit. You have like, what the fuck is that? And... <laughs> oh, yeah, it's just a small, not quite so small rock. Oh, I'm dead. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And, and if you have like an entire front of a centurion mm -hmm. standing there, shields planted firmly in the ground, angled to a certain degree, and mm -hmm. then... The trees spring up from there. <laughs> oh, oh! I can imagine that would cause so much trouble. Yes, 
Yes, and, and and I was just sitting there, and I was like, "This is genius! Why the hell?" Okay, now I've to now I've spoken about it, but I, I was like, "Why has nobody else ever thought of this?" Yeah, uh, I like it. That's fantastic. Wow. Okay. Huh. It's I, all of the possibilities for that could be just enormous. Yeah, and and I mean, if you if you look at I mean, the, one of the most impressive scenes in the Lord of the Rings movies was the scene in the at the uh, first battle against Sauron, mm -hmm. where the elves were like all swinging their swords almost in unison. I was like, okay, that's nice. I'm better. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, the movies were a bit wonka ticky. I think. Well, the entire world is wonka tiki if we think about it, so... Mm. Well, that's because he wrote the language before he wrote the books. Yeah, and he didn't research much about it either, because, I mean, we got the first age and the second age, which are thousands of years, and you have one sword, oh yeah, it's broken, but it's still sharp after thousands of years, and basically the technology hasn't changed after thousands of years. <sighs> Uh, yeah, I could see how that would be problematic. I mean, you know, everyone got stuck at the pub for a while. Yeah, like the elves. Oh, let's get drunk. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, <God. laughs> let's drink like little uh, people, you know, hobbits. <laughs> uh -huh. Problems. Yeah, and, and, and that, that's what bugs me about fantasy, that you have, like, these eons of history build up, and basically it's like... Yeah, they haven't improved on anything, which is completely logical because uh, you had wars in between still, mm -hmm. people fought, and mm -hmm. well... And, and nothing ever comes from technological advancements in war. Exactly, exactly. it's like, hmm, they got chain armor, now they have arrows, and the next logical step is, okay, let's introduce bigger shields or plate armor, mm -hmm. which in turn goes to like, okay, let's take... Big ass fucking hammers to kill those bastards and mm -hmm. and battle axes and then you have to have something better and it's a whole yeah progression. And eventually, it's like, hey, we got a gun here. Screw the arm. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but, and, and that that's what bugs me because if you okay, um, if you have uh, magic in the world, mm -hmm. that replaces a lot of things, but. Yeah. I think I wrote it somewhere on Fantasy Focus as well because if you if you have like if you have a, fa a magical society, and magic is freely available, some things won't happen because if you can fire and kill over a distance with magic, then why you... develop weapons? Yeah. Why develop armor? Why develop housing? Because if it rains, you just go. It doesn't rain over your head, so why bother? And, and and that that in turn poses another set of problems, of course. But it would be a more logical way then, and that's what Tolkien and every everybody afterwards pretty mm. much forgot about it because um, they have a technology. They were frozen in technology, all of them. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the problem with the modern stuff, is they're trying to recreate the glory of the past works, like Tolkien, and it's it's not working very uh. much. I mean, of course, then people say, oh yes, let's apply technology, and then, oh no, it's not actually fantasy then. Well, well yeah, it is. <laughs> and for me, I said, okay, I, the elves are a magical society for me. Mm -hmm. They didn't need to improve. And, but, but that for me was like, okay, how do I get the my humans? I wanted them in the dark ages, technology wise. How do I get them there? And I was like, and and, and I was trying to figure that out because, as we just stated, technology progresses through development, through war, blah blah blah. So basically, I had this one light bulb, and I said, what if humans only existed for nine hundred years? Oh, that'll do it. That'll do it, exactly. And I was like, okay, in this case, I'm going with 
what I like to call mythological fact, not create, not uh, not create, well, creation fact. Because if we look at our all our mythologies, mm -hmm. you don't have a developmental point. No, humans just... are already humans are there. Bam, yeah. and uh, the Greeks had it, the Romans had it. Every every mythology you can think of had it. Basically, mm -hmm. people are there, and it works. And you don't have to think about this stuff. Exactly. So. Um, I was like, okay, the elves came beforehand. What did the elves do with the stupid humans? Well, they enslaved them because, well, they're Romans. They enslave everybody, and that's <laughs> so. So, so I I went from there. I, I okay, it's a cheat. It's a workaround, but it work. The workaround works for mm. your internal logic again. Yes, but then of course you have to consider. Okay, how? Or who created the humans, and aren't they a little bit miffed at the whole enslavement thing? Well, yeah, that's why that I that's what I okay. I'm not, I'm not going to tell everything about my mythology no, 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 because no. well, that would be spoilery. Sorry, no. gotta read the books. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, no, but there is a reason why the elves actually set them free. Uh -huh. The elves said, "Okay, piss off," and. <laughs> And and then basically the elves retreated. They they drew withdrew more and more, and humanity basically took over elven ruins and stuff. Mm -hmm. They cannibalized elven buildings and made their own stuff, like you had in Britain mm -hmm. after after Rome left. And that that then the transition again made more sense. Right. So All I'm trying right. to work around yeah. because. This way, also, I don't have dozens of languages. There's oh. only one language everybody speaks because it started there. It's yeah. Well, okay, that makes sense. I'm a little <laughs> bummed by that because I'm a language nerd, but but it makes sense. Yeah, precisely. And and the language, if you only have one culture like the Greeks, the, mm -hmm. uh, even uh, if you look at Greek stories, even if they went to Troy or so on, Troy in Turkey. They did speak, probably spoke a different language back then. Well, sure. But they so, all had a common language. Yeah, there was no common language in that regard. Well, you had Greek. Because, well, that was trade but language. in the mythology, they all spoke only one language. Because mm -hmm. it is from their point of view. Because introducing another culture into a set of... Well, Zeus created us after he, he killed the Titans and built the... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, it doesn't make any sense because where the hell do, you, do these guys come from? They have a different yeah, they pantheon, do. they talk. Different yeah, things. and then you have a whole different story. Exactly. So, so, so f from a logistic point of view, going with a mythological approach, mm -hmm. you solve all these problems because they don't become problems in the first place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, I'm going to move tangentially. You have discussed the stories you, that uh, should probably have been fixed before they were written. Is there a story out there that don't fix anything at all you wish you had done? I wish I had done. No, not I, 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 no. I, I don't. I, I don't try to look at it this way because these are other people's stories. Sure. I mean, it, that that's like looking at someone else's girlfriend or wife. That is a little bit disconcerting, yes. Yeah, and and why why should I a try to improve something someone else wrote? I mean, that's his job, not mine. <laughs> and why, yeah, and, and why I I need to find my own stories. I don't want to find anyone else's stories and improve uh, improve on them, because well, then I don't get to tell my stories. Which would be really sad because they sound fantastic. I mean. Yeah, huge amounts of trouble and, and logic and research. Definitely my cup of tea. Yeah, and, and, and I mean, okay, I, don't, I write the stories for me, first and foremost. Oh, yeah. I want to read those stories, or I, I wouldn't write them. And I like complicated things. I, I, I like to, you know, sit there and figure out, along with the characters, what the hell is going on? <laughs> If you figure because, it out, let me know. Yeah. No, no, well, I know that, but uh, what, I, what I mean is, as a reader, I like to sit there and riddle about this, because 
t let's take best example the lord of the rings i mean the the book is boring <laughs> wham he is talking about a classical the classical fantasy book well uh, see i uh, like it for different reasons than most people because again language nerd uh, yeah but that's but, but, beside the point uh, from from a purely storytelling point of view, a little bit. Yeah, and let's uh, okay. Let's take Lord of the Rings, the story, mm -hmm. and cut a slice out of Martin's book, George R. R. Martin's A Game of Thrones, where you mm -hmm. have changing perspectives of everything. Mm -hmm. So you have Frodo, of course, Sam, of course. You don't need the other two hobbits because screw them. Uh, they they become relevant la later on. But then you have Gandalf, mm -hmm. and then you have Boromir. Mm -hmm. I mean Boromir. Okay, Sean Bean again. He dies at the end, but still, uh, Boromir is one of the most fascinating characters in the entire series because he actually has. It's not like oh yeah, I was born king. No, he wants to do something. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, then you have, I don't know, you you can add Galadriel in there, but it really doesn't matter if you focus, uh, that, then then also get like Gimli and Legolas in there, mm -hmm. and maybe Aragorn, but Aragorn, again, is boring. <laughs> yeah, there is no conflict there. The, the really interesting character is, uh, is Boromir, basically, mm -hmm. because he has this internal conflict going on. Mm -hmm. And Frodo, okay, we can get the addict angle into Frodo if we start. Yeah. But but if you then take the completely narrow third person point of view of mm -hmm. these people and have each chapter lined up like Martin does in the Game of Thrones, then you have a killer story because Gandalf is like, what the hell is this ring? And the more he reads in Gondor about this mm -hmm. and he understands it, it's like, <laughs> yeah oh oh i would be so tempted to actually write that except um copyright is exactly. a thing so yeah. bummer yeah but, but but this this is something then you have an interesting story because there, then it's character driven mm -hmm. everything else and that's a big ugh for most of the fantasy i've read over the past 30 years or so Mm -hmm. um, it's all omniscient narrator. Yeah, there is a lot of the omniscient bit in there, and it does get a little old after a while. Exactly. And then I read a Game of Thrones, and it was like my eyes were opened. I was like, "This, this is how I want. To, this is how I must write because mm -hmm. this is how my mind works. Mm -hmm. I don't approach it just from one angle. I go like everywhere around and try to figure out these things and." And um, that was, for me, like, yeah, okay, this is how I need to write everything. Mm -hmm. Well, now we're going to have a huge shift in the fantasy style simply because of that one shift in uh, narration style. Yeah. going yeah. to be fascinating. Well, n not everyone can pull it off. That's the problem, though. That is also true. <laughs> because Because people... They, 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 they are enamored with their um, world building. Well, I mean, that's fun for, you know, outside of the story. Yeah, but, but not for the story because, and that, that is something that I try to tell so many beginning writers or mm -hmm. people who think they already can write. I'm like, you're do, do, going about it the wrong way because you don't stand in front of the mirror and brush your luscious brown hair. You don't think about that. The things you think about is, okay, while you're brushing your hair, you're going like, okay, what, what am I going to wear? I need to be on time for the meeting. Blah, 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 blah. That's the stuff you... The brushing the hair is something that you do automatically. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then I go even a step further. I, I tell people, okay... How, how far do you have to go to work? Is it like a kilometer or something like that? Take your... Go to work and pay attention to everything. Write down everything oh, you see with clothes and everything. And then tell me how long it takes you to get to work. Because you won't be there until work is over. Yeah, exactly. 
Oh and, man. And, okay. and, and, yeah, and that's the insanity of yeah, but I want people to see this, and I'm like, yeah, but if you write third person narrow, you don't see this stuff anymore. Yeah, you don't you, care. Exactly. So it's like, yeah, I need to go shopping. Unless someone falls out the window and splashes right in front of you down on the street. Problem. Nothing but spectacular will happen. No. No. So. Oh, yeah. I could. That's a very good tip. Uh, I shall have to apply that to other things because that is an interesting means of going about things. Although, to be fair, before I've had my tea, the only thing I'm thinking about is brushing my hair. <laughs> Yeah, but but you don't think about lo brushing your auburn hair, your your lo uh, auburn. Oh, I'm, I'm not going in. Oh yes, it's got this particular color and this particular. <laughs> color. Uh, yeah, but I that's need tea. How many? Tea. <laughs> uh, I I'm currently reading Robert E. Howard short stories again. <laughs> I adore Howard because he has an economy about his language which is just beautiful. He can tell a lot in a very few sentences. Mm -hmm. But he also sometimes goes into describing how someone looks. But then again, he, he also uses the omniscient narrator. So, uh -huh. mm. and, huh. and if, if you go for the third narrow, you don't, these people don't pay attention to this. We don't pay attention to it. Right. I mean, I, okay, sometimes when I look in the mirror, I'm like, hmm, I'm getting a little gray in the beard here. But that's, that's, that's just a random thought. And yeah. And um, you don't think of yourself, or I don't think of myself as okay. I'm six foot one, tall, a little overweight. I'm like okay. I stand in front of the mirror and I said, "Fuck, I, I'm fat." That that's how my thinking goes. It's not right. like I'm <laughs> no only when I'm at the doctors. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and. and, and that is that is something that very few people seem to realize because that is it is a matter of perception of understanding one's own perception because mm -hmm. i i gave another example once um okay you go into a pub or mm -hmm. a bar uh to me okay you enter the bar mm -hmm. you and then it's an objective process what's your objective going into the bar are you meeting a friend Mm -hmm. Yes or no? If you're meeting a friend, you just look around, where is your friend? Right. Oh, he, she isn't there yet. Um, next objective is dub, 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 the free table. Oh, cute guy, free table. Um, yeah, but yeah, but... Then you know, drink, and then etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Yes. Exactly. And it's not like the bar was smoky. I could uh, um, I heard music blaring it was a particular song people were talking about it because right oh, at that moment you're like not there free table cute guy uh, <laughs> only in film noir yeah exactly and and uh, and then you get uh, that's something that bugs me with martin i have to say because uh, especially in the last novel where he uh where uh, john en enters a big chamber and then he has an entire paragraph about the fucking flags that are on the wall and i'm like dude who gives a shit <laughs> well i mean you know diplomats from the un who are trying to figure out the nations uh, represented and blah blah yeah, but blah. not john snow who has been mm. in that thing uh, several mm. times before it's like okay yeah that's my bathroom there's a mirror there there's a shower there <laughs> who cares <laughs> Yeah, no. <laughs> and, and same if you're bar scenario and you're looking mm. to hook up immediately, you start ignoring 50% of the clientele there. Mm -hmm. That's uh, just talk statistically. 50% of the clientele is completely uninteresting or mm -hmm. only interesting if they stand next to the guy you might be interesting in. Mm -hmm. Interested. Mm -hmm. And and that's the kind of thought processes that many people forget when they talk about these things. I mean, you go somewhere and you have an agenda. You don't go, uh, it's not like, oh yeah, let's go to the palace. What are you doing at the palace? I don't know. It's just, it's, it's on the um, tourist trip. 
Because <laughs> obviously, you know, the dwarf in the city needs to be on the sightseeing hop on, hop off bus. <laughs> exactly. exactly. And, and that's, that's why I have so much... F- I, well, I... I hate it. I, I start, I've started hating it. I've started hating reading this fantasy where it's like, blah, 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 blah. Duke of blah, blah, blah stood next to blah, blah, blah. And then, well, nothing happens because it's not relevant for the story. <clears throat> yep. Okay, now I think you need to write a satire and taking all of these things and just throwing it in there. You've got your omniscient narrator who cares about everything, but the characters don't care about the narrator. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that reminds me, I, I made a suggestion to a friend of mine who helped me out in a tight spot with money, and I said, I, mm-hmm. I need to repay you in one way, and I, I'm trying to, you know, like, go for the, the developmental editor sort mm-hmm. of thing, but not. Yeah. I don't want to read the stuff, I just want to hear what they have to tell uh, say, and then fix it, Right. which sounds really insane, but I can do that, so, mm-hmm. and I, I, I had this idea, okay, well... <laughs> Um, and I was like, I, I was thinking, okay, this is completely his wheelhouse. It's completely nuts. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I don't want, maybe he uses it. So uh, basically I told him, okay, this is what I, this is how uh, you never see the aftermath of a horror movie. You never see the aftermath of a horror movie. Uh-huh. You don't. Oh, no. What a so, concept. the blood, sm- the, the slaughter with people bisected and whatnot, mm. you don't ever see what happens afterwards. Who comes there? Mm-mm. I mean, Scream touched on it a little bit, but not, but not really. <laughs> that I, would be I, not interesting to most of the people who go for the blood and the guts and the gore. Yeah, but it's interesting for the people who love screwball comedy. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I, I had this other idea once where uh, basically just a concept for, uh, well, we were tossing ideas about for an anthology. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, how about a world that goes like this? And then I wrote like this stupid ass crazy text uh, down, which was like, okay, imagine. The, uh, a world where the gods of evil actually destroyed the goods, gods of good. Ooh. Yes. Uh, uh, with, and then realizing, shit, we can't run this place on my own. They try desperately because, well, <laughs> but they're morons. I mean, we're talking about people who are all, whose only goal is, like, destruction. And then, like, uh-huh. yeah. Wait a minute. How do these guys get food? <laughs> and... and, and just, just the these kinds of ideas because I mean basically then you have like okay the, the super evil bad guy mm-hmm. who's trying to teach people how to farm because well so they need to eat <laughs> um, yeah um I could see how that would be problematic and and, and well. I, I don't know, they, they didn't pick up on it. I thought it was hysterical. The entire yeah. idea is completely nuts. It would be great. Oh, highly entertaining. And the whole, you know, deposition of the gods because they can't feed us and we're starving. And, I mean, the economy's in tatters and everything is dying. And... <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. All right, what? I'll wait for you to write that one and uh, be right there. That sounds fantastic. <laughs> I don't know if I... Uh, the thing is, that that's the one thing that I want to do. I mean, I got all these crazy ideas, but I don't have the time to, to develop them all. Mm-hmm. So, I, for instance, and this is completely nuts, I spoke to a screenwriter in Nigeria, and we basically started developing a TV series because I all of a sudden I had like this, okay, female empowerment in Africa story idea in my head. Bam! And... and I just called her up and they said, listen, blah, 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 blah. Wow. <laughs> so basically, you just need to host a whole bunch of short story anthologies. Uh, nah, I, I, I can give my ideas away. I don't care. 
Well, people okay. would have to pay, of course, but... Oh, well, yeah, naturally. I mean, you're making a living off of this. That's kind of the whole point. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> Some days. No, but, I mean, uh, for, for another friend of ours, Samantha Noor, so I, I, she, she told me about her stuff, about her story, and I... I was like, okay, then I started asking because it didn't make sense. As you can tell, I try to make sense of shit. Uh -huh. And I asked questions and she didn't give me the proper answer because she didn't have it. And I asked more questions about this and that. And then all of a sudden, through all this questioning, basically, I, I had this light bulb. And I gave her, okay, here, this and that, blah, blah, blah. This is how it goes. And she was like, if I had the money to fly you into Dragon Con and give you a hotel room there, I would get you over here right fucking now because you just fixed everything. Well, there you go. <laughs> so, and, uh, and, yeah, I'm good like that. I don't know why I'm good like that. Because I tried to figure out the logic behind it all. Probably, I don't know. All right, Story Master. <laughs> We'll come up with a, a cool title or something and uh, get you, you know, a coat of arms that you can put on the wall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, an angry, an angry dwarf, I think, would be a good mascot. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Uh, all right, that's going to be huge amounts of trouble. If I ever do end up writing one of those satires, I will let you know. <laughs> Uh, alrighty, it has been absolutely fantastic talking with you. Uh, right. Thanks so much for doing this. Thank you for giving me a second chance. I again, I apologize for oh, yesterday. I was like, oh. Um. One time, I was meant to be running a study session for an exam the following morning, and um, I forgot there was an exam. So oh, yeah, yeah no. <laughs> yours is not that bad. <laughs> One of my not final exams in school, I I knew we had an exam, but I was there two hours late. <gasps> <laughs> so I came there like completely wrecked because I had drunk. <laughs> I was like, where's everybody? Well, I've been writing since eight. I'm like, what? <laughs> All right, you win. That was, that was pretty bad. <laughs> I, uh, I got standing ovations though when I entered the classroom. <laughs> Aha, <laughs> uh -huh. did you actually get the exam sorted out? Uh, well, the teachers were nice enough to put me in the principal's office and let me write the thing there. Little did you know that they had all the, the dictionaries there, which I didn't use, but still they were there. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> oops. I mean, great idea, but, um, oops. <laughs> Yeah, I'm lucky like that. <laughs> uh -huh. uh -huh. Alrighty. You're huge amounts of trouble. Just huge amounts of trouble. I'll take it. <laughs> uh, well, have a fantastic rest of your evening. Enjoy the very cold. Uh, and uh, don't freeze. Is it really that bad? Well, hang on. Let me check. Because it's a little early in the year. It says zero degrees. Okay, it's a bit, it's a bit chilly. Feels like minus two. All right then. Wow. Well, so you're... yeah, we haven't had a proper winter here. Thanks global warming for years now. So I don't know. Might Maybe you'll get blizzards all through winter. That would be nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Except for you know the whole going out and getting food thing. 30 meters, that direction is a supermarket. Okay. <laughs> All right, you win. <laughs> I often well, forget how compact and easy to walk Europe is because I live in a place where, no, the largest city nearby is at least an hour's drive away. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I remember America like that. Yeah, it's like huge and huge amounts of nothing in between. Yes, very much amounts of nothing, uh, and uh, I mean, outside I've got trees and about two miles in any direction, everything just stops, and it's Amish country. Oh. So there's there's not a whole lot around, farms and whatnot. Well, there's not a lot, of, well, the 
two kilometers, maybe three kilometers away, we got we got some green coming up, but everything else here is basically, yeah, houses. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, interesting. Oh, I need to get back to Germany. It's been a while. Oh, you've been here before? So. I have, yeah. I was near Kessel. Kessel, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's more so southerly. Yeah, I was there in the middle of June. It was a little warm. Kind of, sort of. Warm and humid. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Don't go cause trouble somewhere else for a while. Yeah? <laughs> well, I don't try to cause trouble. People get just upset with me when I point out all the the, the openings in the armor. Like, ah, you can go there. Ooh, there. Uh-huh. I never said you tries to cause it. I just say you did. <laughs> Unintentional or not, definitely causing trouble. Is that a bad thing or a good thing? Well, that depends on what career you're in, and I think you're probably in the right career. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in every other career. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I was in the army for a year. That was fun. I ooh, hmm. I feel like that would be bad. Um, well, let's put it this way. I want back then we still had the draft Mm-mm. and. Mm-hmm. I, I went there and I said, okay, this is my back. These are my knees. These are, these are my my allergies. And they were still, yeah, we know what you want, but you're still going. And I'm like, okay, your problem, not mine. <laughs> and so they put me in this unit and the first day there and like, my knees, my, <laughs> my allergies. And they were like, just like, okay, he can only march for 10 kilometers. He can only carry five kilograms, which was basically an empty backpack with a canteen of water mm-hmm. and my rifle. Nothing else mm-hmm. for those marches and everything else. Everyone else had to pack, pack their massive bags. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I didn't have to go through the obstacle course. I didn't have mm-hmm. to do this or that because of my knees. And I'm like, yeah, well, you fuckers, you wanted me. I don't care. <laughs> Ah, uh, that would be a very clear case of bureaucracy gone sideways. Yes, and it got even better. And I, uh, okay, um, you get most of the stuff from the army, shoes, mm-hmm. whatnot. Mm-hmm. And your military boots you can keep. The, the shoes that you wear with the specific uniform, you, you get second or third or fifth hand. So, mm-hmm. ugh. Who knows who's uh, uh, well? Anyway, uh, whatever was in my in my in those shoes basically caused the skin to fall off my feet. Oh! And um, I went to the doctor of my base, and I was there because I had to wear these shoes every day mm-hmm. because I was like a, a, a flight a flight security attendant, blah blah blah, in the tower. And I went to the doctor, and I said, "Okay, I I'm not going to wear these shoes anymore." Uh, because this only happened because of those shoes. And he's like, yeah, well, that's interesting because we never had such a case before. So basically he gave me free choice of shoes until my duty ended. I could have gone in there with slippers into the office and they couldn't have said a single thing. <laughs> so basically what, what happened during basic training with the five kilometers and so on, I just topped that by one entire <laughs> magnitude. <laughs> I was like, and, and and the first week when this happened, I, I didn't have my private black sh- uh, dressing shoes with me. So, what did I wear to the rest of the outfit? Jogging shoes, of course. <laughs> so, suit pants, jogging shoes, <laughs> and. and uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, all right. I think you have a special relationship with the world. I have a special relationship with authority. (laughs) Yep. Yep. Take that and use it well. Yeah. Well, now I I, I feel better about it, so yay! (laughs) Yeah. It's a good thing you recognized it in time. Well, yeah. Otherwise, we wouldn't be having this conversation, so... That would be sad. 
And now I really need to go read your books because I have an inkling of the sort of trouble I'm getting into and it's going to be highly entertaining. Well, it's um, it's not a no funny book. There is no, no humor. That doesn't mean it's not going to be entertaining. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, beware of the squirrel. If you like, I can send you the ebook of the first one, unless you prefer dead trees, in which case. Uh, I, I mean, you know, it doesn't matter. Also, beware well, of the squirrel. Sorry, what? Yeah, people complained. Um, I'm not going to. Spoiler alert. <laughs> there is a squirrel. Yeah. Okay, good to know, because I have a bunch of squirrels living on my property. They're not the most intelligent creatures. Well, this is, we're talking about a squirrel familiar here. Oh. <laughs> yes! <laughs> uh, okay. He, at one point, he, tells to, uh, he, he says to his elven mage, mm -hmm. Don't leave home without me. So... <laughs> This is going to end well. I can I can already tell this is going to be great. Well, have a good evening. It's what? Uh, 6.50 now. We've spoken for what? Almost. Ooh, 54 minutes. Ooh. <laughs>